We're here at about 6,000 feet outside of uh, Golden, getting ready to go up to Mount Evans, and we're trying to figure out how altitude is going to affect us as we get up to 14,000 feet. So this is a portable pulse oximeter, and it's basically showing us two, two readings. It gives us your heart rate, which your heart rate currently is around 70 on the right-hand side of the screen, and it also gives us uh, what's called the oxygen saturation. And yours is reading 92, 93. It's saying that you have 94% of your hemoglobin is currently carrying oxygen, approximately. And values we like to see are, you know, 90% or greater. Um, obviously, lower elevations, your oxygen saturation is going to be higher. Higher you go, the oxygen saturations are going to be lower. So if I'm at sea level, would I be even higher than it is right now? Right, you'd or, be uh, upwards of maybe 98, 99, maybe even okay. 100%. So now my heart rate's a lot higher. SAT's 95. Your hemoglobin is carrying more oxygen than mine is. Well, <laughs> my percent, yeah, the, the per, percent of my hemoglobin is carrying uh, more oxygen, exactly. We're just shy of the summit of Mount Evans. And I've got the pulse oximeter on. Um, seemed to be only a, a couple of points lower here. I was down, what, 93 to 95 yeah. uh, percent when we were down near Golden at about 6,000 feet. So we're more than twice as high and seemed to be somewhere in the high 80s to like 90, 91. Pulse is a little lower, I guess, because uh, I've not been as active yeah. and my coffee is. <laughs> has maybe uh, worn off a bit. Um, but I'd so. say definitely um, you're not looking too bad here at you know almost four, at 14,000 feet. So now I'd say that's looking, that's looking pretty good. The fact that you're uh, not dropping as much shows signs that you probably have been at altitude over time much longer and your body has developed some chronic compensatory mechanisms that let you do better at altitude. Uh, some things that uh, would be your body makes more hemoglobin, so you have more hemoglobin to carry oxygen. You, your body has a variety of enzymatic changes that can happen that uh, can help your body better deliver oxygen to your tissues. So that could be a sign of, uh, of your um, doing all your health to do your work for, the, for us here in Colorado. <laughs> I'm curious where I'm at though. Let's, yeah, let's, really. Let's, uh, let's see swap where, that see where over I'm at. To, to you and now, see, I'm doing much worse here. And uh, I was actually in the mid 90s down by the uh, dinosaur parking lots, and now I'm here in the mid 80s. So I'm doing worse, but realistically, my level of high altitude experience this spring and early summer has been has been minimal because I'm recovering from a knee replacement surgery. But uh, that could be a good example. Right there, you're having spent more time at altitudes helping you. My not spending time at altitude over time has, has made me less able to compensate. But it also could be just you. I mean, you might have an inherent ability to better compensate too. Um, in our discussion earlier, you mentioned a friend of yours you've done some outings with, and that person was a very fit, active mountaineer in the, in the Cascade area, and then they tried different outings at elevation and always seemed to have problems no matter how fit they were. And I'm assuming given that they had tried to gradually acclimate as well. And that's just the uh, variability we all have as people where some are gonna do better than others. 